You left behind your home, where your life was in danger. And you've arrived in a city where your life cannot stop. You're an asylum seeker. I was really scared I will never return to my country. You didn't choose this city. The government did. On unfamiliar streets, among unfamiliar people, it's easy to feel adrift. Look around. You are invisible. No one here has time to hear your story. In this country, people doesn't know you. If you are a doctor, if you are a teacher, if you are a politician, they don't know you. This is your street. Though you have many neighbors, you do not know their names. This is where you live while you wait for your asylum interview. You share this house with others who are also seeking refuge. But that doesn't mean you have much in common. They're from different countries. Different languages. Different cultures. separate lives. When I go downstairs, they go upstairs. When I go in the kitchen, they'll leave to the other room. They, like you, are waiting. They, like you, are in limbo. This is your room. You'll spend a lot of time here since you're not allowed to work. You feel like you're a prisoner. Unable to move forward, the hours pass slowly here. You're tormented by thoughts of those you've had to leave behind. I feel good here because I left my, my son and wife alone. I feel I'm Batman. You're caught between two lives. Your family under threat back home and the new life you hope to create for them. I remember one time I called him before I go to my English class and just I called him, are you okay? They said, we are now in the forest. <laughs> we are waiting some, uh, a chance to throw the border. Maybe we lost one of our children, maybe we lost one of our family. Images and memories plague you. You feel your mind slipping. You have to try and clear your head.
your interview could come at any time. You'd think that telling your life story would be easy, but it's not. Between 300 and 400 questions. Some people make some mistakes in their interview. It will be the exam which make your future life. Day after day, you rehearse this interview. I need a clear timeline of events. When did they first make these threats? How did it get worse? What did they do to you? What did they actually say? I need you to be more specific. Stay focused. They are looking for inconsistencies. What injuries did you sustain? Do you have any documentary evidence? And this was at three in the morning. I have your statement. You said it was in the afternoon. Why didn't you just move? You have to, to be respectful. The first and that was the last time that you saw your family? You have to hold And your you just family. left them there? In danger? And sometimes he might pick a question that you can't answer. Okay. August the 22nd, the day you say they came. You have to concentrate. What happened? And give the answers as you they come. You previously stated they arrested you at your home. Can you clarify? Was anyone else there when you were Where arrested? Where were you being? No, 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 no. Whereabouts in the building? What was the view from the window? Can you describe what? The room? How many they men used. were present? What were they wearing? What did they? Did want anyone you? witness the abuse? Why did you not mention that you were? How long did they hold you for? Why have you changed your mind? What is it that you fear will happen to you if you return to your country? Do you have anything else you'd like to add? We didn't choose to leave our country. I fled from the war. And here, I'm nothing. I'm just a refugee. This very, very, very heavy word. Try to get some rest. You may be here for some time. <laughs>